Good day everyone. Today I'll be discussing to you Introduction to Literature. This is before we're going to discuss the main lesson for our subject this semester, which is creative writing. The objectives of our discussion today is first, to define literature. Second, to discuss the importance of literature. Third, to discuss the standards of a literary piece. Fourth, to familiarize the different types of literature. And fifth, to familiarize the different genre of literature. Let's start our discussion with a question, what is literature? I know you have heard this question from grade 7 to grade 10, and you have answered multiple answers for this. But today, we're going to review the meaning of literature. Let's see if you have not forgotten your lessons from your junior high school. Literature comes from the word litera. That is a Latin word, which means an acquaintance with letters. From its root word, we can already make a definition and a guess that literature has something to do with letters. Now, in the dictionary of Webster, it is defined as anything that is printed. Okay, Anything that is printed, however, there is a condition here as long as it is related to the ideas and feelings of people. So we can say that not all printed materials are literature because there is a specific requirement for it to be considered as a literary piece. And what are these requirements? First, it should be related to ideas and feeling of people. Aside from that, literature is also defined as a product of particular culture that concretizes man's array of values, emotion, actions, and ideas. A while ago, we've made a definition or a qualification in the definition of literature. And that is, it should be coming from the ideas and feelings of people. Now, the definition has gone deep. It says here that it is a product of particular culture. A culture that concretizes man's array of values, emotions, actions, and ideas. Therefore, we can say that literature is an imitation of human experiences that tells about people and their world. Now, the Greek scholars defined literature as a copy of reality or a copy of the world around us, the world that you see. And the world that you see involves People talking, walking, singing, crying, dancing. They do a lot of things. And these collective actions are called experiences. And these experiences are being written down by people who love to tell stories. And when they started to write, no, when they start writing stories, when they start writing something, they are copying reality. Because whether you like it or not, writers, when they write, they are influenced by what they see around them. They are influenced by the world around them. There is a uh, saying which says, if the story is very sad, there is a big possibility that the author or the writer have experienced tragic events or sad memories. See, when the time that this, this writer start to write, he or she is writing 
the experiences of people around him. And most of the time, actually, his own experience, his own observation of the world. So when you, when you read something, a literary piece, a book, an essay, a story, a novel, or poetry, you are actually reading life. Life of people living in this world. And when you do that, you learn their experiences. You learn everything that happens to them and to the environment, to the society where they live. Now, why do we need to study literature? And what is the importance of literature? in our life, in our society, and in the academe. First, studying literature is like looking at the mirror of life. Remember what I told you a while ago? It is a copy of reality. When you read a book, you are like looking into the mirror because you are going to read a human experiences. His innermost feeling and thoughts reflected in a literary piece. Have you read sometimes a book wherein when you, when you start reading, you feel different kinds of emotion? Sometimes happy, sometimes sad, sometimes there's horror depending on the feeling uh, imbued by the writer to his literary piece. And these feelings are real. These thoughts are real. These experiences are real. They are just hidden in beautiful words in the books. It is important to study literature because when you study literature, again, you study life. You study culture of people across time. So imagine that when you read a book, you learn about the different culture of people. Example, an American writer writes a story and basically he's American. So everything that um, he writes is based on what he experienced and what he observed in his culture, in his society. And when he writes that, he is writing his experience. He is writing um, the experience of people around him, the culture, the tradition, the songs, everything, everything about that writer. So you have not gone to America, but you have studied already the culture. You have already learned the ways of living of those people simply by reading the experience of a certain person in a certain book. Now, literature is basically, let's say, standardized. As I've said a while ago, not all printed materials can be considered a piece of literature. It can only be considered a literary piece if they pass through the standards. So what are the different standards of literature? Number one, a good literary piece should have universality. And we, when we say universality, it is timeless and timely. You know, it never gets old. And whatever is real in the other part of the world is real on this part of the world. It is relevant. It appeals to all. Everybody can relate anytime, anywhere, because it deals with feelings and fundamental truth about life and a universal condition. You know, say, uh, to give you a concrete example of universality is that when a writer writes a character, and the character experiences happiness and sadness, right? So in that 
context alone, when the character experiences happiness and sadness, it is true to all. Even if you live in America, in Africa, in Philippines, whether you are poor or you are rich, you experience happiness, you also experience sadness, regardless where you are or what your age is. Whether you're young or you're old, you experience the same feeling, the same emotion. And that's what we call universality. Universality is, is something that everyone can relate to. You know, when, when one writer writes about um, good versus evil, you know, wherever you are in this world, you can always relate because there is always good and evil playing around you. Even in your daily life, you can observe there are good people and there are bad people. There are injustices. There are just people as well as those people who are unjust. See, when, when you write something about this kind of truth, anyone can relate. Everybody can relate because these are fundamental truth and these are universal condition. Again, another example, poverty. When someone writes about poverty, you know, the main character is very poor and that very poor character later on becomes rich. You know what? Wherever you are in the world, whether you're young or you're old, whether you're poor or you're rich, you can always relate because that situation of life is real, real to all. That is why everybody can relate. And another thing that everybody can relate, very popular theme in, in all types of literature is love story. You know, the topic about love. When that becomes a topic, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but everybody can relate about it. Now, second standard or characteristic of a literary piece is that artistry. What's an artistry? Literature is not just any printed material, but it is the quality that appeals to our sense of beauty. You know, when you read, you can always say, this is a beautiful text. This is not ordinary. A literary works uses creative words, forming the art of using beautiful words to tell a story. You know, there is a difference between normal words and creative words. And that what makes a literary piece a literary piece. Okay? Let's say, for example, when you're going to say in a normal way to a woman, you are beautiful. Well, that's normal. You can, you can write that. Any, anyone can write that. But when, when someone says that your beauty is beyond the understanding of humanity, you're like a wild flower blooming in the wild forest, that, my friend, is creative. See? It becomes creative when the writer uses creative words. He will play with words in, in order to make normal conversation beautiful. That's why there is artistry in literature. It is not just about writing, but it is about writing creatively. Okay. Next is that a good literary piece should have intellectual value. When we say intellectual value, a literary work stimulates thoughts. It should be sensible. It makes sense. It enriches our mental life. It helps us think. Like it evokes our curiosity by making us realize the fundamental truth about life and human nature. You know, a good 
literary work is when someone would really think, you know, not that predictable type of story, but something that there is a twist. A story that evokes curiosity. You know, who, who kills the person? Who's the, who's the murderer? And then, ah, okay, that, that character is a murderer. But it turns out that he's not actually the murderer, but it's someone else. Someone else that you didn't expect. See, it triggers your curiosity. It's why sometimes a good literary works is hard to understand because of its complexity and because the writer uses very beautiful words in order to hide the truth. And the more that you read, the more that you discover life and you, you realize that why did I what did why, why did I not think about this at first? See, it invokes our intellectual curiosity. It has an intellectual value. And later on we would discover, okay, so this book or this story is about love, is about revenge. It is about unrequited love, or it is about someone who is trying to overcome the obstacles of life, okay? So, that's what we call intellectual value. Next is permanence. A good literature is permanent. You know, once you read it, you cannot forget it. It endures. It can be read again and again. And every time you read it, you will gain a fresh delight and new insight. And it opens a new world of meaning and experience. You know, there is only one book that I can assure that qualifies into the standard permanence. And that is the Bible. You know, when you, when you read the Bible for the first time, Sometimes the very first reading, it means nothing to you. But you read it again, then you'll start to discover things, understand things. And then when you read it again, suddenly there is a new inspiration. You, you, you look at the story differently. You know? that, that, that's an example that even if you read the story over and over again, you will not get bored. Instead, you will gain another meaning of the story. Another book that I can recommend is the book of J.R.R. Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings and The Adventure of the Hobbit. You know, even if I am going to read it again and again, it really never, you know, failed to amaze me. Every character, every setting, you know, everything in the story is just amazing. And, you know, the first time that I, I read about the character of Frodo Baggins and Samwise, um, I, you know, I, at first they're just friends. But in the second reading... I, I, I was able to concentrate on the value of friendship. You know, I, I never thought about this in my first reading, but in the second reading, it's just part, oh, why did I not see this on my first reading? You know, that's what, I, which I'm, what, that's what I'm trying to say. That even if you keep on reading and reading, it does not get old. It's always amazing okay that's one characteristic of a good literature next is that it is written in style oh no style is you know a peculiar way a unique way of each writer in telling a story 
you know each writer has their own style you know um william faulkner you know is different when 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 he when he writes a story is it, it's, it's just we should call this um confusing sometimes it's confusing it's hard to understand but you have to read again and read again and then okay now i understand so he's complicated in style there are writers who are very open and very simple in in writing their stories and there are writers just like edgar Allan poe well his style is a little, a little bit morbid and a little dark because it also reflects his you know life story but that would be a lesson for another meeting so what i'm trying to say is that every writer has their own style in writing their stories okay and that makes a good liter literature when it is written with style next a good literary piece has a spiritual value you know literature elevates the spirit by bringing out the moral values which makes a better person a good literary piece after reading it you will get something out of it a moral lesson an enlightening the capacity to inspire you know have you have you read a book that inspires your life me i have read once and it changes my entire life up until now do you want to know what that book is yes you're right i already said a while ago it's the bible not only timeless but whenever you read it it inspires you it inspires you to do good it inspires you to become a better person it's it inspires you to rediscover yourself and to rebuild yourself and become a better person but i'm not only telling you that the bible is the only book that inspires moral or spiritual value but there are a lot of books actually that inspires us okay example um the chronicles of narnia the lion the witch and the wardrobe okay at the end of the story you will realize about sacrifice when aslan sacrifices his life in order to save narnia it makes me realize that how how come people just sacrifice their life for the people they love and how come i don't appreciate the sacrifice the sacrifice of the people who loves me you know like my parents our parents we do not see their sacrifices we just taken them for granted and above all the sacrifice of jesus who died on the cross in order to save us and then you realize that i'm sorry lord i have taken for granted all the sacrifices that you've made okay it always goes back to you know striking an inspiration and it would make you think of your morality and your spirituality and your connection with god you know that's one characteristic of a good literature another is suggestiveness some books are very powerful that even by reading a few pages it influences you you know this is associated with the emotional power of literature have you have you read of a book that after reading you, you cried a lot 
or after reading you are inspired to do things that you never think before but after reading you just think about it and say why not so it just motivated you great literature moves us deeply and steers our feelings and imaginations giving and invoking visions above and beyond the plane of ordinary life and experiences that is why people gain wisdom from reading a lot of books and i am so sad to observe that nowadays our young people are no longer that voracious in terms of reading how many novels have you read how many books have you read how many essays and and to be honest some of you do not even like reading now i'm telling you start reading because when you read you are inspired you learn you, you do not learn just reading or words but you learn the experiences of other people and thus you will learn about yourself when you read a lot the more you discover about yourself the more you discover about the world and the more you understand everything around you now there are two types of literature first poetry these are written in matters and usually there are rhymes these are numbered while prose is written in freestyle like our essays drama novels short stories those are prose and we're going to discuss each type of literature in a separate session individually now let's go to the genre of literature okay people pronounce as genre others genre but it's pronounced as genre say it genre genre okay so the different genre of literature the first genre of literature is poetry second short story third novel now what's the difference between short story and a novel okay let me answer you that now short story it has minimal character one conflict one conflict only in one setting it is very short but not necessarily short because there are writers who are very creative in writing that they are going to write the story in a whole 10 pages but exactly just a short story because it only has one conflict it is just the way the writer writes it it's very long it is it's a style of the writer and novels are composed of different chapters with more characters and more complicated settings and more conflict and usually it also has a lot of theme well short story only has one theme one conflict minimal character novel more conflict complicated settings more characters okay next drama okay the difference between novel and drama is that drama is intended to be performed and there are conversations and narrations and there are uh, it is um, divided into several um, parts and usually this will be interpreted or performed on stage and of course essays okay the free uh, flowing of your ideas when you write free flowing of your ideas there are type of uh, different types of essays that i'm going to discuss in a separate session okay i hope that everybody has already understand and gain a new enlightenment about literature before we proceed to writing because you cannot write creatively if you do not understand 
the basic of literature. Now, before I end this lecture, I would like to ask two questions in which you are going to write your answer in the comment section below. The first question is, why is literature considered an imitation of life? Again, why is literature considered as an imitation of life? Number two, would you consider all printed materials as literature? Why or why not? Again, write your answer in the comment section below. Thank you very much and once again, have a good day. I'll see you again in my next lecture for creative writing.